What is good, everybody? This is Tatro, and today I'm so stoked to share with you Embodme's latest edition, the new Array Touch 2, fully customizable, super sensitive control surface. As you can see, just by looking at this unit, if you're familiar with the previous unit, some upgrades and changes have been made with the addition of some hardware buttons, different ins and outs on the back, and a different type of surface, which I wanna get into talking about later in this video. But first I wanna take this thing for a spin and show you guys what I can do with the built-in looper on this device. All right, that was for sure like a, a lot of fun to perform with this setup and all these sounds. I hope you enjoyed that performance. I wanna super stress that this is an early prototype unit and that I am partnering with Embodomy on this to help promote their new Kickstarter campaign for this unit. I thoroughly enjoyed the first iteration of the Array Touch, so I thought it's a no brainer to check this one out and I was not disappointed. Even though I've come, this is not a full review and this is not even a fully functioning unit. Again, it's a prototype. So take this with as many grains of salt as you need. This is just my first impressions after having it for a couple days. First of all, design wise, this makes a lot more sense for me as a performer and using this as a production tool because now we have these hardware switches. Mainly, let's take a look at these page buttons. I can jump between the different pages and the different layouts where on the previous unit, all of that control, you had to use those control functions on the play surface. So it kind of took away from your ability to play on the surface uh, when you needed to switch between different modes or change key or things like that. And on that note, we've got a few more function buttons here, ones that can help us change octaves or go into a key mode or a MIDI mode where we can change the MIDI mappings, all where we can use this screen. This screen is currently on the looper mode, which we just demonstrated. And we've got the wheel here where we can navigate around that. In general, separating this control area from the play surface is like hugely welcome. And that makes for a huge improvement. The control surface is probably something most people are wondering about because it's made of a new material. And the best way I can describe it is it's made of some kind of like soft, fabric. It's not made of silicone like before, which I know that they're actually going to be offering a silicone version for those that want to, you know, play with sticks. But this surface is just a little more sensitive and nice to touch. 
of course this is an MPE controller, same as the last, so I'm able to do things like vibrato and slide around the device. Also, of course, the ability to just naturally use pressure to change a sound. Just, it's like this level of connectivity with the music and with the software that is really nice to feel on a fabric surface. I don't know if I've ever played music on a fabric surface before. Now, I'm certainly just scratching the surface with this device, but I did customize this control surface. This is my customized uh, template, which I'll show you all later. I also customized this page. And it was very, very easy to do. I'm using this in conjunction with Ableton Live, but I'm using the built-in looper. And you might be wondering, well, how does that all work? And let me show you. So what you're seeing here on the screen is Array Lab, and it's what I use to customize the control surface. This is gold. This is what brings this controller fully to life. This is my custom control surface that I made. And you can see that each one of these different blocks, each one of these different buttons or faders is something that can be moved around. If I go to an empty page here, you can see that we have different types of things to select. Like we could drop a keyboard in here and then we could click and drag it. So it's just that very, very simple approach to designing a controller where you have a lot of freedom over what each individual thing can do. And then ultimately you can push that directly to the control surface. So let's say I wanna just delete that. I want to keep just the keyboard on this page. Let's push that there now. And in real time, the controller will reflect what you're doing on the screen. You also get a full panel of controls here on the side. That's how I'm able to achieve some of the MIDI rounding, change the MIDI channels of a button, change something from entering a note MIDI message or a CC message. It's all done within here. So that's really cool. If we minimize that now though, I can go over to Ableton Live, which is where all the sounds are coming from. And you'll notice that each track to have the monitoring set to the input, which means all these tracks can make noise at the same time. I don't have to arm them or anything and they each have their own unique MIDI channel that they receive MIDI from. And that is again something I've done in the Array Touch, you know, design app. I have access to all these different instruments, uh, a bunch of different effects, including effects on my master, you know, including the filtering, the low pass filter there, the auto pan, These squares here are launching vocal samples. This blue button here I use during the performance is a solo button for that vocal sample channel, which is very fun when you're doing the performance, but how was this performance even achievable? I'm not doing any of the sequencing in live, I'm purely using the looper on the Array Touch and it works in a really cool way, even though it's like still in beta and this is still a prototype. The timing is a little wonky right now. They tell me that they're working on that and that's gonna be fixed for when they officially release the unit. But what's happening is the Array Touch 2 is giving time to Ableton Live. So we're receiving external time from the unit, meaning that when I press play, this project will start playing. So we can hear my shaker loop playing, which gives me time. And then whenever I want, I can start recording and I can see my loop length here right on the screen, which we can change that right now. Let's see, it's set to 16. Let's bump that up to 64, which is how I had it for the performance. And then I can record a 64 bar loop. But for the sake of this demonstration, let's shrink that down. Not too small, but let's put it back to 16. Enter into record mode and it works like any other looper you've seen before. That's looping around. Now anything else that I play is going to be recorded into the loop. I play a note. It's all going to get recorded into the loop. If I didn't want to record something, All I had to do was go into not overdub mode. I just hit the play button again to just be in play mode where I can still play things and I can still change effects, but they won't be recorded in. This is taking all those MIDI messages and recording them. So anything that you do, any signal that you send while it's in record mode, it will record those. 
So I switch in and out of that depending on what I'm doing in the session at any given time. Another cool aspect of this looper that I didn't realize until I really started to get to work with this thing is each of these pages has its own unique settings. So we can change the loop length for each page. So when this bell instrument came in, that was playing a much shorter loop than page eight, which is playing the full four bar loop. And right here on the screen, I have control over that loop length and also the tempo. And I can use this screen here and the wheel to navigate and change different settings about my loop for each page. It's a very fluid process. And initially I thought, well, why would I even use this looper if I'm just gonna use it as a controller for Ableton Live? But then I started having a lot of fun with using the looper and not being locked in to Ableton Live's way of sequencing and things like that, which becomes especially fun, I think, for those of you that use hardware out there, which of course this has lots and lots of MIDI connectivity. So why don't we connect up a, a little synth here, my little nano box lemon drop, and let me show you something that's a little fun. All right, so I've got the lemon drop here connected up. It's just this beautiful sounding granular synth. You're connected via one of the two MIDI outputs on the back of the device. And one thing that I was having a lot of fun with, and maybe you hardware folks out there will have fun with this too, is using the built-in looper almost like a tape. So... Maybe it's not tape, maybe that's not right the, the right analogy, but here, I've recorded that loop now. And I'm just sort of gonna record a bunch of random sounds in free time. I'm not really, I have no tempo information at all. I'm just recording notes. And now what I could do is in real time, change the length of this, which has some really interesting results. just scanning through using the wheel to change this loop's length in real time. And now considering that we have, you know, CV ports and another MIDI out to use, and each one of these pages has its own looper settings, how crazy could we get with this, you know? It's experimental, it's fun, it's weird. I, maybe that inspired you to try something interesting like this, but anything that gets me towards like doing weird, fun things in music technology, I think that's fantastic. So I don't know, even though this is just an early prototype, this feels really good. I mean, literally it feels really good on the surface and it seems like they've taken to heart some feedback that they probably got for the first iteration where they're even upgrading the surface and doing something new. Having a fabric surface is really unique. I do hope there is a way that I can keep this thing clean because as you can probably tell, a white fabric and you're using it with your hands, even if your hands are nice and clean, you never know, it's gonna get dirty over time. It's gonna collect dirt for sure. So I hope they can find a solution around that. There were also times where even though this thing is so sensitive, I can get all that very quick sounds, all those quick rolls with no error, but I did have the occasional double trigger and I can't really recreate it right now. performing quite well now. So it could have just been like, since I restarted it, this being a prototype unit, there's no issue, but that sensitivity is nice. It'll just have to be dialed in so that none of those double triggers come out. I don't know. Sound pretty good there. I can't recreate it, but if any of this was interesting to you, check out the Kickstarter page for this unit because no doubt they had success with the Airy Touch 1 and they're doing it again here with the Airy Touch 2. It's a controller that's truly a blank slate, make whatever you want out of it. And then this new design with even more hands-on control, I think brings the whole thing to the next level. Thank you to Embodme for partnering with me on this video. I'm super stoked to see where this thing goes once they've got everything dialed in. Cause like I said, I'm just scratching the surface and some of the full features aren't even here on this prototype, but the features that are would work. That's gonna be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.